Uh, well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Gustavo Palacios, and I'm going to show you uh, our work uh, titled A Complete Cognitive Architecture as a Services Composition System Inside of Pervasive Environments. Um, so, well, th these are uh, well, this is the schedule, some of the things we we're going to go through. Uh, so, first, uh, I work, or well, the team works in a uh, the development of a cognitive architecture named Quajo Jotl, uh, whose main goal is to produce human-like behavior, uh, taking uh, neuroscience, uh, psychology, and computer science as the uh, theoretical basis. Uh, in order to achieve this goal, uh, we've divided the architecture in uh, several cognitive functions. Uh, which can work together or ideally, uh, well, ideally together or uh, in isolation. Some of those are uh, shown in this uh, diagram on the right. Um, now, the pervasive system, uh, composition systems, um, uh, the pervasive systems are systems which are in constant change. So, to deal with this kind of uh, environments, we need a um, a highly resilient and flexible system to, to deal with them. One approach to those is uh, the service composition systems, which uh, some of the um, students with Dr. Felix are working on. Uh, most of those systems follow the same set of steps, which are shown in the slide. And uh, some talk has been made about uh, the possibility of using a cognitive architecture as this uh, composition system. Uh, why? Well, because uh, cognitive architectures would ideally be very flexible and resilient. So, uh, well, naturally with this assumption, uh, some questions arise. Uh, questions such as, is the cognitive architecture enough to solve any uh, specific problem? Uh, are all the cognitive functions necessary to solve any specific problem? Given a specific problem, what are the essential necessary uh, cognitive functions needed to solve it? Uh, does the way that information is presented to the architecture affect its performance? And what is the way, uh, well, if so, which is the best way to present that information to the architecture? So, uh, well, also we know that the architecture is going to have sensors and a perceptual system. So the, the way the information is perceived by the architecture could affect the results. So, does that uh, way of, of getting the information affect the performance? And which is the best way to show that, uh, that information? Um, so we have these questions and one way to answer them, uh, since we do not have a complete cognitive architecture uh, implemented, we thought about doing some tests uh, to answer those questions using what would be a complete cognitive architecture, which is uh, human beings. So we uh, design uh, some tests with uh, the objective of uh, determining first the feasibility of using uh, what is called dissimilarity mat matrices to evaluate uh, human behavior and thus a cognitive architecture in, in its due time. Um, we tried to determine the best way to present the information to the cognitive architecture. And uh, we wanted to find uh, the critical factors or uh, which attributes would uh, the architecture need to solve a specific task. So uh, for that, we uh, divided this experiment into two parts. The first one uh, were a series of psychological tests uh, in which we uh, obtained from humans uh, the, their intelligence level, 
their uh, visual detection capacity, digit detection, uh, their su successive series, uh, that is a memory test, I, I, if I recall correct, correctly, and pro progressive digits. Um, while doing these tests, we took the results of each human and generated a vector. Uh, which we would use later to compare uh, the results among humans. The second part of uh, the experiment consisted in creating a virtual environment uh, on which the humans would be asked to perform a certain task. Uh, on this case, it was to move a drone uh, on the map seen on the left and find the goal, which is the red square on the right. For that, the humans were given, uh, sorry, given a virtual reality uh, headset, and they had to manipulate the uh, drone with a controller. The catch is that uh, humans would not be seeing the map on first person as we normally do. Uh, the map would have fixed cameras uh, al along the way, and they would have to use those cameras as if they were CCTV cameras, switching between them and using those different perspectives to find the goal. Uh, well, uh, sorry, and uh, while they were doing that, we would measure a performance, that is uh, their ability to finish the task, find the goal. Uh, the remaining battery on the drone, uh, which could be translated as time uh, remaining, and uh, how many times the drone crashed with the environment. Uh, those are the things that we consider would be important uh, on a similar task, but done by a cognitive architecture to take into account. So we took those results and generated another vector uh, with them. Uh, we got several of these vectors for each human, uh, 10 vectors for each human and uh, the psychology tests as well. So taking all the information that we uh, uh, placed in these vectors, we generated a larger vector for each human which we then use to compare the results from each human, well, the results from each human compared to themselves first, and then each human compared to the other humans. Now, uh, this is uh, called a dissimilarity matrix. Uh, well, similarity matrix. And what it measures is how similar the results are from each human compared to every other human. Um, ideally, if humans uh, had similar results, we would expect to see a lot of yellow on this graph, uh, which we do not. So uh, that means that humans did not uh, show consistent results between them. Uh, we, however, found that uh, even though most humans uh, did not show similar results between them, they shared some other common uh, aspects. Mainly, uh, it seemed, although it's a very small margin, but it seemed that uh, by showing the information you know, one camera at a time, uh, that would result in a slightly better performance than the other way, which was show all the available cameras at the same time. Um, we think that uh, that small improvement is due to the fact that uh, one camera at a time drains the attention slower than, say, five cameras at the same time. Uh, so later, what we did was we tried to find which of the um, capabilities um, resulting from the psychological tests were uh, determined, uh, what determined the, how likely it was for them to succeed in the task. Uh, we took the best results uh, from each of the two groups we, uh, we took of humans. The first one was elementary school uh, children. And uh, we took the results with correlation higher than uh, 60%, which are shown 
with a little arrow. Uh, and we tried to, to calculate the p-value just to see if the correlation uh, was true. Uh, our results show that they are and that there is a correlation between performance and say intelligence and digit detection, which would be the uh, lower most left uh, square on that graph, right? Um, what uh, seemed curious at the time is that uh, for most of the results, a children which had a high uh, say mark on all the tests usually did not perform well on the test, which would sound counterproductive, uh, well, counterintuitive at, at first sight, right? Uh, we then did the same thing with uh, PhD students, and we found uh, all the values with correlation higher than 50%. And we also found some uh, correlation between some of the tests and a high performance value. Um, something that, uh, well, jumps uh, or, or is very noticeable at first sight is that uh, for children and adults, uh, it's not the same kind of uh, psychological test which need to be high for them to have, have a high performance. So that, uh, that means that a more developed brain would need some different kind of intelligence to perform well on this kind of test. So in the end, what conclusions can we draw from this uh, experiment? Uh, or how did we fare with, with our initial objectives? First, uh, given the proposed experiment, which is the uh, maze-like uh, virtual environment, uh, determine the feasibility of using uh, dissimilarity matrices to evaluate human behavior. We found that uh, we cannot do that at least for a such complex experiment uh, because humans are not uh, that similar in the results and noise can be confused with a human. So since we cannot compare humans between themselves uh, using these matrices, we cannot compare a cognitive architecture either. Uh, determine a better way to present the information. Well, we found that at least in this experiment, uh, showing one camera at a time show uh, results in a better performance, uh, although small. So we think we, we should do more tests only to find uh, a better result. And find the critical factors involved in solving the task. We did manage to find them uh, and we shown the, the correlation value. So that's, that's something good. Now, uh, what's left for us? What, what's, uh, what are we working on and what's on the future? Um, well, uh, first, well, we know that the correlation between the performance and the psychological test differ in which areas truly affect the performance for both groups, uh, which I've shown. Uh, the results indicate that on average, only one input at a time is desirable to obtain a better performance instead of several inputs at the same time. Uh, when given the option to use the drone camera, and that is a first person view of the, the drone, uh, uh, the participants on the experiment would prefer using that camera instead of the CCTV's cameras that would uh, show the drone in a third person perspective. Uh, we believe that this is related to how we perceive uh, the world. We perceive everything from our, our eyes, uh, which means that is a first person view. So most of our skills are uh, tuned to work that way. Uh, we now are working on looking and finding a set of psychological tests that could be directly cor correlated with the cognitive functions in which we divide uh, the, the architecture. Um, sorry, uh, another point under development is the abstraction of some mechanisms that could simulate the myelination at different levels and different uh, cognitive functions. That is uh, the difference between a developed and underdeveloped brain. Uh, those mechanisms would, would allow the, us to explore whether these levels of myelinations are responsible for making the brain operate differently 
uh, at different ages. Uh, we are also developing a methodology that would allow us to streamline the configuration of a cognitive architecture. Uh, that is, uh, we would be better equipped to select both the functions uh, related to a certain task and how the, those functions must be tuned in to obtain the best performance in these kind of systems. Uh, and well, that would be taken since our cognitive architecture looks to uh, work as a human, we would test on humans first to get those values. Uh, so that would be all. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, go on. Can you explain better the triangles in slide 21, I believe? Mm. Yeah, I, I, I could not understand the meaning of, of these triangles. If you can give us a better uh, understanding of what, what, what you're showing uh, with them. Uh, sure, let me just, oh, well, uh, okay, let me just come over here. Okay, so what we are showing, um, I think it's hard to see over here, but... Uh, For example, this line, performance. We have performance, What, what, yes. what, 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 what is the mean of each of these uh, boxes there? Uh, performance is uh, how good the humans were at uh, solving the test. And we have uh, several columns, A, B, C, D, E, and that's where the correlation comes from. But, but so, what, what about the two, two first uh, boxes there? the white and the red one? Uh, uh, we're not taking values from them because we, what we are checking is just performance, battery, and crashes. Oh, okay. Uh, so these values, we're not comparing uh, battery against performance, but we are comparing performance against A, and A means intelligence test. Okay. So this, this uh, square over here would be the correlation between the performance and the intelligence okay. of the participant. So this just for the A, B, C, D, not for the three first ones. Uh, yes, the, the first three oh. uh, should not have, uh, well, should not be counted. How, how, uh, you made that just to make it triangular, but maybe you could just uh, put the, the three first co connected and, and with a cut triangle, it, it should be more understandable. <laughs> well, yes, <laughs> uh, may, maybe it, it would, um okay yeah. now, now i understood yeah okay I, I was not understanding the the whole meaning of the triangle because the triangle. there are some of the points that are not making sense to me so that's that's my problem with it yeah and um the other triangles show uh, the correlation between having high stats but with all the combination of tests okay thank you questions no. Ah, okay. estás viendo tuyo? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you very much.